Hey game makers, how's it going tonight? Oh, happy St. Paddy's Day to all the Irish and the not so Irish out there, or the kinda sort of wannabe Irish. Uh in that honor, I'm not drinking coffee tonight, I'm drinking something a little bit stronger. We're gonna get some coding done tonight. And uh yeah, yeah, that's where we're at. And do we have anyone in the chat? Not see anyone in the chat, so we're going to assume that people can hear us for when you are watching later. With that said, uh, I think that we should start first off with um, something I've been coming in contact with, uh, with regard to issues. Um, I've been noticing more and more little issues are cropping up because as we're building really cool features like the Heroku deployment and things like that, I'm realizing that some of my older content is out of date. Um, I understand this falls squarely on me and I totally get it. But at the same time, I have limited resources when it comes to actually, you know, going back over these videos and re-editing things. So I'm trying to find a, a healthy balance where I can update the documentation and I'm trying to figure out a, the best way to to update, to jazz up, to do what I need to do for some of these older videos, because a lot of people are finding my older videos, you know, where, you know, they can set up their own online server through AWS. <laughs> Excuse me. And it works really, really well. Um, but it's slightly out of date. There's slightly more, um, like for instance, the Redis server is something we added very recently. Uh, and now I'm kind of debating between, you know, should we have it the way it is where it's mandatory or should I build in something where it first tries to connect to Redis and then if it's not there, uh, it'll fail over to just a single client session. Uh, the more I've been thinking about this, the more I'm thinking of going with option B and doing a little extra checking just to make things a little bit more backwards compatible my bigger problem going forward is at what point do we have to sacrifice for previous things where I might just take the old videos down just so people can't watch them, but they are very, very useful and I might not get the time to actually recreate them. So this is where it's kind of like a, a risk reward, if you will, of building new features is that the old features become sometimes obsolete. So I'm struggling with that. Um, I'm open for suggestions if you want on the Discord channel. Uh, here, let me put on the Discord channel the uh, somewhere here. It is a somewhere here. Let me just throw that in there. No, that is not the right Discord. Where are you? I'm pretty sure I had it in my session one notes. Yeah, I had it right here. Let me just send this over. Let everyone can join the Discord channel and join in the conversation if you have something that you would like to contribute. Throw that right there. Okay, so now that that's done, let's focus on cleaning up the login. All right. Uh, let's look at, what am I doing here? We're doing something. Let's look at where we left off with the um, the login. Uh, we were trying to make it so that you were automatically logged in based off your token that you got from the server. So that way you don't have to log in every single time that you uh, that you uh, come online. Uh, so right now we're kind of stuck in this weird, you know, error where things aren't loading properly. And this, honestly, I've been doing a little bit of research. This has everything to do with cloud save and nothing to do with the login. So we have to make a decision here. So if I come in here and turn cloud save off, 
just to kind of give everyone the perspective of what we're doing here. So just for for reference, okay. If I because it recognized that I had a token. Uh, here we go. Because it recognized that I had a token. It knows that I exist. So it says welcome. It gives me a continue. And I also added a log out button. It doesn't do anything right now, but we need a way to log out. Okay. So we definitely need a way to log out. Just give me a second, guys. Um, we need a way to log out. Uh, we can we can continue on with the game, which brings us into our um, our scene title for right now, because the cloud save isn't working. Uh, once we get the cloud save integrated, it'll go to the scene map of where your cloud save is. But this is something I'm going to clean up off offline. I, I figure we can spend our time doing something a little bit more productive tonight than trying to fix old code. Um, once again, a little bit of something I'm trying to trying to change up. Uh, so that's that. Uh, let's try to do this logout functionality. Uh, it actually should be pretty easy. So if we log out, really, if we think about it, there's two things that we want to do when we log out. That's the cloud save. Um, there's two things we want to do when we log out. We want to, so on this button continue, we're searching for a token. Right, 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 right. So we're verifying the token that we have and we're setting the token here. Let's get rid of all this gunkery. All right, let's, um, I'm trying to, I think the easiest way for us to log out locally. So it, it, it sees that we have a token. It, it validates it on the server right here. That's what this is doing. It's doing this verify token, which we just, we just recently added. So we're verifying the token. Excuse me. We're verifying the token. We are a valid user. Now we want to log out so we can log in as another user. I think the easiest way would be to get back to this login form, right? Ooh, actually, we can just... We run this clear stack, I wonder. Because I don't think we can just run this start. Huh. There would be a way to do this easily. We can go back to the scene and clear the token at the same time. Uh, you know, we might even be able to just go back to create login form and just clear the token. Well, no, let's try that. So let's just copy this. And what I want to do, see how local storage is working here. So we want to set the item of token to data.token. All right, that's what we're doing when we log in. So if we go to local storage and we, I wonder if local storage has a way to just clear item. Uh, clear item. Yeah, just uh, there is a remove item. Okay. All right. So let's take this remove item. And we're setting the item to token, so we want to remove the item token. So let's do that. We want to do that on that logout button. So that logout button. Uh, if I named it properly, yeah, yeah, button logout. Yeah. Let's copy this up here. Do that. Uh, hold on a second. There we go. Okay. So we're gonna do button logout. Okay. And we're just setting up a 
click or touch start handler. And we're going to say uh, local storage dot remove item. I'm going to make this token. Okay, so remove the item token. I am indeed, Jed. I am working on the auto login feature. So we, we've gotten it to log in. Um, you can see things. And now we are trying to hook up the log out button so you can go back into, um, into the login process. Uh, and I'll go through it one more time and how it all works. Uh, I want to, let's create the login form. back down here. So we cleared the token and we're going to create the login form. This should work. I should also hit return. I'm going to do return just to make my life a little easier. I think that should work. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. Cause it's a click event. It's a click event. Never mind. That should work. All right. Well, let's do this. So it already sees that I'm logged in from previous time. So I should be able to log out. Puts me back here. That's fine. And I connect and it logs me in really quick. Let's so let's reload and it should already have me logged in. That's fine. So let's log out and let's restart, which should put me back into this login screen. That's how we know this all works. Yes, 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 yes. Really quick. Let me just make sure application. Uh, local storage. I'm not seeing anything. If I sign in, I'm seeing this token key. If I reset, I'm still seeing that token key. And if I log out, clears the token. Beautiful. All right. Well, it was pretty easy. <sighs> One thing down. Nice beverage for myself. Success. So. Success. All right. Yeah, so remove item and we go back to the login screen. Cool. Let's get rid of all of this because we don't need that. Um, let's do that. Make it a little prettier. I think that should do it with the logout button. There's something that's been bugging me. I want to put a little bit of time into this maybe another night um yeah you want to let's let's write down some stuff are we on session what are we on session seven yeah let's uh make a new a new doc one of these days i'm actually gonna publish everything so everyone can see all these notes uh let's say session seven notes okay uh improvements Uh, and I wanted to, excuse me, I really want to be able to make a, a ability custom uh, HTML for login register continue forms. Um, you know, I know how to do this pretty easily, but it would be nice to be able to make it at least a little easier for you to, to be able to do it. I mean, it is an HTML, but maybe even separating. How do I want to put this? This is ugly. Um, and I'm actually wondering, does. Uh, are we on the new ES6 with this? Let me just check something real quick. So I'm doing something called, um, oh shit, I don't even know what the hell it's called. It's, um, it's a different kind of string mechanism. Uh, it's using this tick instead of the quotations. Uh, it allows it so that you don't have to add these plus signs everywhere, which makes life tremendously easier. However, you gotta put variables and little things like that so it becomes a little bit more difficult i'm just going to try it with one screen which is this logout continue form just to see if it works 
Um, cause I'm quite interested. I'm quite interested to see if this, this actually works. Because it would be a lot easier because then you could specify exactly what you want without having to worry about all these extra, you know, pluses and quotation marks and everything else. It'll just take me a couple seconds this one time to kind of test it out. And while I test that, I want to know, uh, uh, string. uh, template literals, string literals, also template. Yeah, it's string literals and you can read up all about this, but you can do some really cool things with this where it makes it easier to kind of integrate things uh, with variables to strings. You can kind of add this dollar sign and uh, the brackets to specify a variable instead of having to do like, uh, normally you'd have to do something like, here, let me just put this in here. So you'd have to put like your, your div, and then if you wanted like a variable, you would have to then go this plus variable plus you know, other div or what have you. I mean, it works, but it's kind of ugly as sin. Whereas with the, the string literal, you get rid of all of this and write it much more naturally, which would go like this. And then you'd use the dollar sign, quotation and variable. And a lot of the newer, uh, all the IDEs kind of know what this, what this, um, you know, the, the string literal with the, um, the variable stuff so you can see it a little easier. It looks better. Yeah, that kind of thing. So like, uh, yeah, this is, this is a good example. So like, uh, that. And it looks a little bit more like how you'll read it almost. Excuse me. So let's get rid of that. Let's test this out. Uh, create login continue form. So I'll actually have to log in. I'll reset it because now I have my token. Welcome, continue log out. It looked like it worked, but it looked like something didn't get quite through correctly. I'm sure it's something silly. Um, am I not seeing a plus here somewhere? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that that should do it eh. I'm missing something hold on dial with oh no it's this okay. little things little things ladies and gents all right. So now it looks exactly like it, like it should. So yeah, we can use these string literals, which makes things a lot easier because now we can, you know, it's a lot easier to add things and take away things because now you can put it like as, you know. Yeah, it just, it makes life easier. So I'll update all that, but it would be nice to take this HTML, put it in a separate file and you can mess with it there and then put it in. I don't know. I, I'm trying to find ways where it's it's easy to manipulate. Because once again, you don't want to be doing this through, you know, plug-in commands. Or not plug-in commands, but, you know, the... Uh, what are these things called? The plug-in parameters, if you will. Like, are you really going to come in here and specify your HTML? Like, I, I think that would be most silly. I, I, I would hope most people would not want to do that. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I would I would hope most people wouldn't want to do that. So um I don't know. I'm trying to figure out better ways to to express what we want to put on the page. Make it modular but at the same time not crazy. Why are you not closing on me? But 
Uh, what? Got something open and I just can't see it. Uh, well, you're gonna die. And I will open you again because you're being weird. Ah, <sighs> all right. Welcome in, Jed and Felipe. How are we doing tonight? As you can see, I'm already well into my uh, uh, St. Patty's Day celebration it's here. So, cheers. All right. So that that's auto login without cloud save. Really quick, I will do a little bit of cloud save. Um, see if we can get it working. I'm only gonna time box this to like 15 minutes or so. If we can't figure it out in 15 minutes, we'll move on. We'll just we'll we'll move on. Uh, cause I want to fix cloud save from the beginning anyway. Uh, I want to make it so that we can, you know, specify how many save slots we want. I want to have redundancy backups so that like, it saves locally first and then it uploads to the server. So that way it's not a straight, um, that way it just has a little bit more, uh, cushion. It, it's not as rigid. Um, you know, if your your player saves and they don't have internet connection, they can still save locally. And then when they connect to the server, it'll automatically upload everything to the server. So that's my game plan with it. Um, like I said, it's been my game plan for a while. I have kind of the base code set out somewhere in the ether. Uh, so I'll come back to that another time. But let's just try to get what is already there working or see if we can get it working. There's something, something funky is going on with this and I want to figure it out because it would be nice. People would, I would assume people want this kind of stuff where they can automatically sign in and have cloud save. So what should happen is continue. And you can see here this JSON, this JSON with this timestamp, this play, there is no way. Huh? All right, hold on. Online cloud save. So we are running this load game without rescue is what we're running. Hold on. Just copy a couple of things. Just want to see what is going on here. I want to see what's getting through because what should be getting through is two or no, not negative one, not zero. Two should be the only thing that's coming through. Just make sure on that. Continue two two. Perfect. This is wrong though. So this JSON should be JSON data from the actual save file. This load from cloud is wrong. Is there an easy way I can grab this data? Let me just check something here, folks. Um, I have this on my RoboMongo. Uh, is this the one? Okay, perfect. So here, I can show this. So this is, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, this is RoboMongo. This is a, a MongoDB client. Uh, and it just allows you to, you know, view your database in different ways. And I can go over this another time, like how to, you know, search by like username, you know, username and I want it to be, you know, my particular user and it'll sort it out and kind of do it, that kind of thing. Uh, we can go over this another time because there is a whole lot to this uh, and I don't want to get us bogged down, but there's some cool things you can do with this, uh, especially when you have a lot of data. But this is our saved data right here. 
And really quick, I actually want to see what we have for other save data because I know other files have worked just fine in the past and it shouldn't be tremendously different. Interesting. There's no global data. Oh yeah, but global data is just test. Yeah, that doesn't mean anything. All right. Um, so a string, yeah, string, string. It should be this. Okay, so data. Okay, so the JSON is the decompressed from the base64 data. I have a feeling the wrong data gets saved. Hold on a second, hold on, hold on. Let's let's try to once again, we're we're gonna cap this to a little bit. String I. Sometimes you can get a better idea from this. Uh let's put that out of the way. Continue. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. So it is not that. Um, let's try to turn off cloud save. Jesus. Of course this thing is like. Okay. Try to turn off cloud save. I have an idea. Try to turn off cloud save. Oh, you want to know what? I think I know what it is. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's open Robo 3T back up. Let's delete our document. Okay. There. All right. Let's come in here, online cloud save. Let's turn our cloud save back on. And we're just going to try to save cleanly because maybe it just, I got corrupt data. I mean, Crazier things have happened. All right, let's go new game. Let's hit save. If I save there. Should be able to reload. Oh, it should be right down here. Perfect. That part looks good. All right, so now I should be able to reload. And if I continue, Hmm. All right, one more time. We're just going to save again. And I think I know what the issue is with this. So let's say we come over here. We are going to scene title, but instead let's go to scene map. Okay. See if that works. Continue. Snap. It was just my, it was just my data that was corrupt. So that's even better. So if I come down here, I save, right? I reset. Normally I would start in the middle of the screen, but I continue and I'm at the bottom of the screen. Fuck yeah. Victory. Sometimes save data gets corrupted. Uh, and this is another reason why I want to do multiple slots as well. Uh, uh, yeah, and Jed, you can direct uh, directly uh, edit user data with uh, MLab if that's what you're talking about. Uh, you could also do it with... Um, you could keep uncompressed save files and mess with that as well. Um, I wouldn't. But I, I know... You are looking for something, Jed, more on the lines of, let's say, yeah, let me open up mine because I don't mind showing mine. Uh, where am I here? Here, let me show. Oop, oop, here. Let me show my name. Okay. I don't mind showing mine because, yeah, it's mine. Uh, normally I wouldn't want you to show me your hash or your salt, but I mean, it's, it's an encrypted password, which is fine. But theoretically you could do things like, um, add, you know, gold and items and that kind of thing here. And then your game is const is not handing out items and gold from your game, but more from the database. And there's all sorts of ways to do this, but that's how I would 
handle something like a, a global economy. I've talked about this in other sessions. But um, yeah, you can directly edit the data here. You could also technically do it in here as well. I mean, this object right here, the save data object. Yeah, let me see. Let me see if I can put it in a little bit better of a format. Yeah, it's still a shitty format. It's just a gigantic string. I mean, you can't really see the end of it here, but it's just a huge compressed string of an object. So theoretically, oh God, theoretically, you could come in here and say and save the uncompressed data and go in and mess with things. I mean, it's it's totally possible to do. So that's kind of cool if you really want to. Um, I wouldn't suggest it because it it's an easy way to mess up game data, but it is possible is how I would say it. So yes, you can mess with uh, save, save data. Actually, this would be a really, having it uncompressed could be really useful for um, anti-cheating methods. So if you know your game really well, you can take your metric data and verify it against the save data. So metric data is, a, is another thing that I did where you can collect stats as your game goes. So, you know, every single time they get a chest, every single time something happens in the game, you get a snapshot of what level they are, you know, how long they've been playing the game, what's going on. And if you see anything that kind of doesn't sync up, you can kind of throw red flags up. But then with save data, you can you can coordinate between the two and see if like anything got jumped between, you know, if they're messing with their game data or something like that. So it's just an anti cheating method. Um, yeah. Kind of a cool little question. So yes, you can directly edit user data with this. I wouldn't suggest it, but it could be useful for other things. So um, kind of a cool thing. Right now I keep the save data in a compressed 64 string because it saves database resources. And you know, these databases can get expensive the more you take up. So that's what's going on with that. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, let's see. I was doing something. You want what? I was doing something. Cheers. All right. Ooh, what the? F what am I doing? All right. So this is working. The save file ID is working. So cloud save. There was absolutely nothing wrong with it. For right this second. So let me get rid of that. Let me get rid of other console log that I had. Cool. Cool. So nothing was wrong with online cloud save and the uh, the new auto login feature. It just I just had a corrupt save file. So I will take it. I will take that as an answer. I'm a very happy person right now. No, ah, yes. The magical mute button. I actually came up with it. Uh, <laughs> this time around because I was sick of uh, blowing my nose and hearing myself blowing my nose. It was just, it, it was not pretty. Mm. All right, now that we got that out of the way. Oh, we got login done pretty quick. Uh, let me just make sure you guys can, yep, you can still hear me. Okay, uh, let's move on to... All right, I say, like I said, there's there's a good amount of things that we need to fix. Uh, I'm going to start making an actual list, not just one. I think I'm going to make it on GitHub. I'm going to start to take some of these uh, some of these things I did in previous sessions, uh, some of these previous notes. Yeah, let me. Some of these previous notes that I've made, I'm going to start to consolidate them, put them into a roadmap and start prioritizing uh, features. I, I did it before with uh, session one. Session one right here. In here, I kind of made like a like a higher request, moderate request and lower priority stuff, you know, and eventually I want to get to all of it magically, but I want there to be a way for people to I don't want to say vote, 
but have a little bit more say in the direction of where these things are going. So I want to make um, I want to make issues in GitHub, but I also want to make it you know free form. You know what are the f essential features that you want in it? You know. And then we can start prioritizing where we want to go with this. Because right now, I'm kind of picking willy-nilly on what I feel like doing. Um, which is fine and good, but, you know, people might really congregate towards one thing over another. And I don't want to keep picking everything every single time. So, with that, uh, I'm still going to pick tonight. But, I am going to try to work on... Um, just a better layout of, you know, how you can contribute, how you can, you know, put in what you want to say and what's next on the list, or at least what next two are on the list or something like that. Um, Cause right now I am, where am I right now? Uh, tonight I am planning on integrating uh, character, uh, some random dudes, character creator EX. Uh, that's that's what's on my plate tonight. That's what I'm going with. But we have some of these things that really need to get done. Uh, HTTP to HTTPS. Uh, the reason why it's still in red, uh, there are a lot of little things that are the matter with this. Um, and it really has to do with everyone has a different machine that they're running this on. So some people are running off Windows. Some people are running off Mac. Some people are running off Linux. Some people are running off God knows what. And... Each one, you know, there's there's certificates you can buy, you can get them through a domain, you can get them through CertBot, you can do self-signed certificates through, once again, Windows, Mac, all these other things. And it's not as straightforward as I would like. Um, and I have to now think about how I'm going to do it for everyone all the time. The good thing about the Heroku one, it comes automatic. So that's pretty, it's nice. Uh, but... I have to do this in a way where actual human beings everywhere can use this. So yeah, that's what's going on with that. It's still hugely important, but I'm kind of, eh. uh, okay. Local storage integration for auto login and save token information to local storage for auto login. Some would say that that is the same thing. Yeah. I'm one of those people. Goodbye. Uh, OAuth with Passport, Google, Facebook, etc. So, funny thing about this, uh, thanks to my buddy, I believe it was Squareware, who wasn't on my Discord channel, somebody gave me the idea. Somebody gave me the idea, I believe it was Squareware. Yeah, Squareware. My buddy Squareware really got me on the right track with this. Uh, and we are now officially unblocked from OAuth with Passport. Now, there are some questions that need to be answered with this. Um, for instance, uh, so big picture, right? If you have a login with Google page, a login with Google button, okay? Uh, what's your, you know, username or display name? You know, how does that work? You know, when you have a login with Google button, you're gonna log in with Google. It's Google's gonna say, okay, but now you don't have a login with, with your local login. So do you have to make a local login or do you just use your Google account? And then we say, bring up a different screen that says, oh, create a new user. And then we're going to have to check if that user exists and make a new user account. But going forward, all you'll have to do is log in with that Google account. And it knows that you are, you know, like, let's say I'm Nelderson. I use my Google account to, to register or to log in. Doesn't matter which one it is. Let's say I use my Google account to log in. It says, okay, you're a new, you know, NelderseonGaming at gmail.com. Great. You're a new user. Cool. What's your username? Um, and then also... What if you already have a previous username? How do you integrate that in? So now you have to take into account a user who logs in through Google. They might have a previous account that they have to link now to that Google account, or they could just have a Google account where now it's constantly, all they have to do is log into Google and it's theirs. And that's the only thing login that they actually need. So there's, there's multiple facets of how to play that and 
<coughs> excuse me <clears throat> there's multiple ways to play that and uh i don't know the best way right now but technically i'm blocked uh, I did figure out a way to do it with um, not just the window closing, but also passing off information. Pretty much we're using cookies and local storage to to handle it. Uh, there's a way to listen to a, if a cookie has been set or not. So you're like making a global handler on the cookie, on the on the cookie being signed. All right, I'm not cookie being signed, put cookie being assigned to the browser. Uh, so it doesn't matter on which window it happens as soon as the cookie is set uh, It triggers the action and we can set it automatically from node So as soon as you log into Google, it sends a cookie to To your browser, which is what MV is MV online or, or RPG maker MV is It sends a cookie to your browser and then we have that event listening to cookies being set on your browser that then triggers the the um it triggers that you've you've signed a cookie with a specific name that then runs the fact that you've logged in so once again it, it, it's convoluted and messy and that is why it's there it's technically unblocked but i am not touching that tonight because there there's a lot of answers that need to still be still be hashed out okay so once again this is where i want to put it on github flesh out all the things that need to still be worked on <laughs> within that so that way we're all on the same page and we have kind of a, a consensus at least of where we want to go with this because sometimes it's easy for me to, to pick out the answers to some of these questions other times it's not so easy and this is one of those times where uh, it's not so easy all right uh, so yeah I want to I want to take this entire list and really put it somewhere we can discuss it, we can talk about it, uh, but I want to do it in a nice clean way so we can show, you know, like what, what's next on the list, what are we doing, how are we doing it, that kind of thing. High level. With that, we're going to be working on integrating Character Creator EX tonight. So, cool stuff. Uh, local storage integration for auto login. Uh, do I want to push this directly to GitHub first? Let me think about this. Let's take a look at the code really quick. Uh, cause if it's pushable, let's just push it to, before I forget. Uh, let me just make sure I don't have any remnants from Google. Yeah, I got a little bit of remnants. Bye. Goodbye. Yeah, this is what I was talking about. This is the line of code. So window get, cookies, get all. Name, test Google. Yeah. Yeah, this actually... Oh, this is actually really cool. This, th uh, yeah, this console table. Uh, it makes a really cool table of all the cookies. So that's a, that's a cool little side thing. Uh, all right. Anything else Google? Nope. Make sure everything else is clean. We don't want to push up that messy of code. Yeah, this is the uh, cookie event listener that I was talking about. So uh, it gets the window, cookies, on changed, add listener, and then this is the actual listener. So really cool, really cool. So you can get the, the, uh, the actual cookie based off the event. And then you can base it off the name or where it came from or whatever. So really, really cool stuff. Uh, had to do a little bit of research on it, but it was really fun. I should be able to just get rid of you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is there anything else that I have to worry about in here? Let me just go through this really quick. Uh, bind command. Fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, we sh should be good. Cool. Added logic to use local storage to auto login. Perfect. So I should be able to copy this. 
<sighs> Better question. Where are we putting this? We are putting this in MV Online. We're putting it in game resources. Don't mind me. I'm just talking to myself. JS plugins. Let's change our branch. I happen to use a uh, visual GitHub uh, integration. Probably not necessary for this particular project, but it helps me when it gets into some serious um, No, that's not the right one. All right. Here, and I'll show it real quick just so you see what I'm saying. So I use uh, something called Git Kraken. Really nice program. It shows all the possible uh, branches and configurations. It helps with, uh, com you know, complex conflict merges, which is what sometimes I have to deal with at work. So it's just a nice little tool. Uh, so... I'm on master. I'm gonna make a new branch just to go through the proper process. This is technically a feature. Uh, auto login. Yeah, we'll just call it auto login for right now. All right, so we wanna go to online login core here. We replace. And it should tell us exactly what we changed. And the good thing about telling us what we changed, this is with VS Code. Uh, what do we change in the login routes? Okay, yep, we did the verify token, that's right. We did change the verify token route. So that way we're returning, we're, we're returning if that um, token is verifiable. That looks clean, that looks nice. And this, we added that to the top, perfect. And extra space that's just not needed, whatever. Uh, down here, that looks clean. Get login logout form. Yeah, we use the string um, literal, which is fine. I should do the string literal with all the others, but I'll do that another time. I don't want to do that on stream. Uh, log cookies, you are not necessary. Like I said, it's nice to go through this because it's easy to see exactly what you changed and that sort of thing at least with vs code it's really nice uh, and that seems pretty clear to me so auto login integration with all right push that want to publish we want to publish this on origin I have a Heroku origin, a Heroku remote, but I'm not publishing to Heroku. Okay, and we are going to start a pull request. Okay, a log in there, auto log in there, create pull request. And I'm just gonna bang this out really quick on. GitHub. Uh, while I'm doing that, let's answer some of these questions. <laughs> Auto login. All right, so Rainbow, just because you came in late and you've been here pretty much every single stream, uh, auto login is when you have logged in once. Um, it auto logs you in subsequent times up to when the token is expired. So once the token is expired, it kind of kicks you back out and makes you sign in again. That's the crux of it. Uh, but because of that, we also need to take into account um, what happens if you... Hold did that go? Hold on. We also have to take into account what happens if you want to log out and log into another user. So we made this continue or log out screen. So if you log out, you log out. If you don't, and if you are logged in and you hit continue, you just continue on with your game. And we also got it working with cloud save, which was another thing that wasn't working. Uh, where are you here? There we go. So that is what auto login is. <laughs> yeah.
yeah no google and facebook i was just talking about uh there's some complications with that you can go back and watch a little bit previously uh there's there's a lot of complications with that so uh auto login with this that yeah we already went over everything i'm not gonna look too hard at this All right, yeah, no, need to verify token. Perfect, perfect. All right, it looks good to me. Merge. Merge. I can delete this branch. Perfect. Oh, that was back in 2017. Yeah, I need to, I need to clean this up. <laughs> I need to clean some of this up. Well, let's really quick, let's check if there's issues. Uh... Oh, Squareware, you're awesome. So pretty much what's going on here, uh, they're looking for a way to put a close button on the, um, yeah, if the server is disconnected. Uh, I specifically did this so that you can't continue on with your game unless you are connected to the internet in some way, shape or form. This is something I made a long time ago just to you know deal with any silliness of oh you're connected now you're just connect now you're connected again and yeah i just said no you have to be connected at all times or just no um which is something that we should change in the future as well uh thank you squareware yeah i'll close that out yeah yeah we'll close that out <coughs> okay cool uh, what are you saying to me gap gap by the way I tried Heroku but it required card to do anything really it shouldn't have required a card um can somebody else verify that you shouldn't need a credit card with Heroku if you if you do their free stuff um let me think about that hold on let, let's double let's double take on this free limits oh excuse me uh When is verification required? You must verify your account. Use more than one dino. Add any add-on to the app, even if the add-on is free. Fuck. Uh, that's... Shit. Cheers. So, verification is required if you need any add-on, uh, which means that our MongoDB add-on, our SendGrid add-on, and our Redis add-on, we need it in order to use it. Now, the good news is you can still deploy to Heroku without these add-ons. You just won't be able to use the deploy to Heroku button without that credit card. Um, however, I will say Rainbow, um, I have had the free account for legitimately, legitimately months. Uh, they don't touch it. I have yet to see anything get taken off for it. Um, they're really good about it. And the account verification does get you like pretty much a month for free uh, on that, on that free dyno where it's like, you can pretty much have like. I have like four separate free dinos running and I never hit the, the monthly limit because they're not in use constantly. So, you know, for development purposes, it's still worth it. And I mean, even if, you know, I was telling people AWS, you needed a credit card with AWS. So I'm not gonna not endorse it because it's already done. Uh, but at the same time, I get what you're saying. Uh, and technically, to be to be fair right so hear me out on this rainbow you could download everything 
to, you could upload the MV online system to Heroku and then have your own you could point to your own services that are free that you don't have a credit card attached to let me try to repeat that because the, there's there's a lot to unpack with that statement I don't want to get too sidetracked um, let's say so you can technically I don't know about SendGrid but I know like you can do Redis Labs uh, free account right you can get this for free 30 RAM and 30 connections for free right and you don't need any credit card I believe to get started um, M lab you don't need a cre credit card to get started with but what you would have to do is you would have to go in into Heroku and set up all of these um, environment variables manually so right so you can so you wouldn't be able to so there's a few things you wouldn't first of all you wouldn't be able to use the deploy to Heroku button just straight up okay so now you're in manual land so the credit card does save you a lot of time um, and once again it's still free for that free tier but just be aware you know the time that it would take for you to set up everything so let, let's roll through it really really quick uh, the first thing that you would do is you would you would download my MV online system to your computer you would then add the Heroku remote you would upload to Heroku just straight upload to Heroku without anything any add-ons being added yeah 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 rainbow they if you put in a credit card they don't charge unless you you choose a paid tier to to put the deploy on yeah no you can put it on a free hobby yeah let me let me show you you can put it on a free uh so Heroku pricing So you can put it on a free dyno, okay? This comes with its caveats, like it sleeps after 30 minutes of inactivity. Uh, it uses an account-based pool of dyno hours, but I mean, honestly, if you're just putting it together just to test it out and see how it runs, this works perfectly fine. When you actually wanna run it 24 seven, hobby is where I would suggest most people will be just fine until they get to maybe a couple thousand users, then they're probably gonna have to go up to standard and, and so on. Okay, plus they'd have to probably upgrade their Mongo and upgrade everything else, and it can get a little pricey from there. But when you're at that point, it's a good problem to have. <coughs> so, you know, 100% free. I've been on the free plan for a while. I have my credit card attached to it because I, I play around with it that much. So, but yeah, the free account is nice. The free account works just fine. Uh, so going back to my original uh, statement. So you could... Really quick, download from GitHub, set the Heroku, Heroku remote, upload to Heroku, set up all the free setting, set up all the free accounts that are tied to Heroku. So create a free SendGrid account on your own, create a free MLab account on your own, create a free Redis Labs account on your own, okay? Integrate them all with the MV online system, which would require you to manually put in you know, the SendGrid API, the, excuse me, the Mongo API, the uh, Redis Labs API, or the, the username and password key into Heroku that it was expecting when you initially set it up through Heroku. So if you know what you're doing, yes, you could easily, um, well, not easily, you could set it up manually and not put in a credit card, I think. I'm not sure about SendGrid. I know Redis Labs, you can get it for free. I know MLab, you can get it for free. Those two, I am positive. And you can use NodeMailer, right? So you don't have to use SendGrid. So you can use NodeMailer, which I've gone over in previous videos. You can use the free version of MLab without a credit card and the free version of Redis Labs without a credit card. So, I mean, there is a way to do it without a credit card, but just remember also the free account it, you get even less hours. I believe like normally you get like a full month's worth of hours if you put in the credit card. And then if you don't put in a credit card, you get like half a month's worth. So like you still get enough. It's just, once again, they, they want you to have a, very, a card on hand because it just makes their life easier. They're less likely to think that you're a spammer. You know, it, it, it makes it easier on them. So that's long and short of it. There is technically a way to do it without a credit card. 
but it's tremendously harder. And I did not know about this account verification for any add-ons. I was not aware of that. Uh, Cause I know I started originally without a credit card and it worked just fine for me. And that's why I just assumed and assuming is, is bad, okay? But thanks for telling me, Rainbow. I needed to know. Because knowing is half the battle. G.I. Joe. All right. All right. Back in it. Where were we? We were somewhere. Character Creator EX. All right, let's go to some random dude's site. So I talked with my main man, some random dude, uh, and he was cool and said, uh, essentially go for it. Uh, when I asked him if I could use it with the MV Online system, um, really cool guy. Once again, I highly recommend his plugins. His plugins are always very useful. Um, uh, character creator is something that we've been talking about for a while. I think it just adds an extra element to be able to create your own character, have it universally seen by everyone else, uh, not only from an MMO standpoint, but just, you know, your own personal character kind of standpoint. And, yeah, because if you're, you're seeing multiple players, you need to really just differentiate between them to really, you know, make it different. <laughs> so, this is something we've been talking about for a while. Uh, where are we here? Now I just gotta find it. Yeah. All right, now I need to download and actually install it, which I haven't done yet. So this should be interesting. <laughs> this should be interesting. I agree. I concur. All right, uh, let's do sample images as well. Let's show that in Finder. Let me just copy this and put it over into my game. Uh, somewhere. It's a somewhere. Uh. <clears throat> Whoa, what the? What? 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 Steam, go away. Go away, Steam. Oh, what? What? Steam, why you be so weird? Stop it. <sighs> Goodness gracious. Right, I should probably see how this works. File location should be image character creator ex, and I just downloaded that, and then it's was it extracted. So if we copy this, and we come in here, open folder, and it was in images, and we're gonna put that there. And um, you don't need to see it, but I just put it where it told me to put it. And we are going to add to the bottom of the list. SRD character creator. I'm just going to keep this all the same. I'm not even looking at Okay. Well, let's see what we got here. That's fine. Finally, you're going to require images placed in. Oh. Mm. Uh. Okie dokie. So, what was that? Images. We need a new folder. Some random dude. Uh, background, custom character, custom face. Uh, did I 
get that and the other thing. What the hell do I need? Background custom character. I'm just gonna take this. Uh, custom character, custom face. Walk background, dead background, face background, SV background. Uh, he had it in that folder. Really quick, I'm just doing this. There we go. Uh, and then how the frig do we call this thing? So let's get this rolling. Oh, plug in command. Let's do number three. Lucky number three. Throw a person in here. And let's try this out. <coughs> SRD super tool as engine apparently is required. <coughs> Uh, what the fuck? Tools. Copy that. JS plugins. I'm assuming we're going to put this before. Super tools engine, uh, whatever. Uh, Okie dokie. Uh, yeah. Uh, that might be a problem. Yeah, cloud save. I gotta turn off cloud save for this because obviously we saved it and we did not have SRD variables in there so it's just gonna fail every single time because it's trying to load something when nothing's there uh, long story short we'll have to figure that out all right uh, what am I doing I'm going here Cannot read really name of undefined. What the fuck? What? The deck. Two thousand eighty eight. You know. You know, you know, kill me, bro. Kill me, dude. Kill me, bro. Kill me. What the hell was it? The character creator, 2088. Older list combined. What the hell? This makes no freaking sense. Alright, 
my files have got to be weird. Hold on. Hold on. Character creator. File should be at. File location should be there. Within this folder, you need a folder for each section body, mouth, nose. I could have sworn I had all said things, but let's just double check. So, images, character creator, body, clothing, accessories. Okay. Within this folder, you need a folder for each section. Yeah, we got that. Just making sure I'm naming it right. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Within each folder, you need four more folders, which already have. Okay. That's fine. Other image. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I have a funny feeling. We're gonna have to take this. I have to put this. No, 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 Shen. No. No. We're gonna do that. We're gonna replace the entire damn folder. I have a feeling it's just it's documented wrong. We will shall see. I'm pretty sure I'm right on this, which means that I have no idea if I'm right on this. But we're gonna find out. Show me potato salad. Yeah. All right. So, documentation, bad, okay. This is right. Image some random dude character creator EX. This is bad, okay. It says image character creator lies what you see here is lies horrible 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 fucking lies it's okay my documentation has a whole bunch of fucking lies too so I can't be too harsh on the man I can't be too harsh mm. cheers anyway so character creator <clears throat> uh, let's create our character. Well, he here's the thing. So now that we have character creator EX up and running here, let's put this to our forefront. And there's actually... I did go into this a little bit one time. Um, and now I'm going to have to go into it again. Oh, wait, 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 wait. wait. Did I save it over here? No, that's game upgrade and preloader. Dang it. Ah, dang it. Alright, there is a way to get this JSON. Exit the scene. Exit the scene, really? <sighs> Kill me. Okay, let's see if I can roll through this real quick. Just give me a second here. Uh, file list in Node.js. No, it's not that. It's a file. Character pieces. Okay, that's fine. Check file exists. Perfect. Capture creator JSON. Yeah, so this is what actually gets saved. And then I just need to find exactly where it gets saved. Data character creator. Character creator. Uh, 
So here, let me see if I can Put on some. Let's put on some hair. That is one ugly woman, but we will go with this. Sure, you want to save this character? Yes, I'm positive. So now I should be able to do game character creations, right? Right, right, right. And here we see number three, and this is what we got. So this is what it takes to actually create that character for everything. So for their SV, for every, um, this is the data that we need to save in the database that then should be able to run for anyone, anywhere, anytime. Um, we need to test this obviously, but I'm hoping <clears throat> it's as simple as saving this and should be able to pass it around, load it on everyone's screen, and we should be good. Hey, Gene, how's it going? All right, so game character creations is the key. So you can make your own character. It saves to your game. You can use it as you wish in your own game to display the player. So let's say you, you do him as actor one, actor one can change their name you can change their uh, their character creator like you would normally do in their own game and then we need a way to we need a way to tie this to their account is probably the best way that I would explain it so let's think about how we want to do this so if, if in a perfect world because I don't want to get too feature rich with this, but at the same time, I don't want to make it, I don't want to go too MVP on this one. I, I learned my lesson with cloud save. Uh, we want to make something that's at least, that's doable, but not so rigid in, you know, one way of doing it. Um, let's think. we want to see how we can save this so my overall my overall thinking is that we're going to have to save this this character information if you will in some way shape or form onto the database um, I'm hoping we can use a, a like a long string similar to how we did the uh, the data uh, the uh, cloud save but at first I think I'm gonna keep it uncompressed like I'm just gonna save this entire object just with everything I don't know how it's gonna quite hint mm. Oh, there's only so much scratching of my beard I can do, folks. So much thinking. So little drinking on St. Patty's Day. You're killing me. Ah, uh, cheers. All right, let's keep it uncompressed for right now. Um, my my biggest concern with that is that Mongo does not like nested objects that well. Things tend to get a little messy with nested objects. You want to let's no let let's put it down to like a let's put it down to a large string. I think that makes the most sense. So we'll we'll use kind of like the base compression that we use in everywhere else with the the, the cloud save and everything else that's already built into RPG Maker. We'll take this object, break it down into a string, which I believe some random dude is already doing here. Game character creations, I can guarantee you. So, LZ. Yep. Yep. <laughs> oh, save file info stuff. 
I guarantee you this this is being used elsewhere. I think that's it. Fuck. Where is this? The fuck is this? I don't know what kind of HTTP request he's doing. Oh fuck. That's weird. I don't know what he's doing here. In some sort of HX, HXR request. Maybe he has already something built into this. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know. We'll we'll figure that out for another day. Um. Right, so this game character creations, I guarantee you, is being. Yeah. So data manager extract save content. So it's being saved in the save file. That makes sense. Let's um. Could do an MD5 sum. Might not be bad. We could do that another. All right, I, I'm thinking long term how we can make this more efficient. Right now, let's focus on um. <sighs> Brutal. Hold on, I gotta I gotta read my chat now. I tried. Oh, my brain. Uh, hey, you try to add creator mods on multiplayer that hard? Creator mods? I'm not quite sure what you mean by that, Gene. Hey, your project helped me a lot. Thanks. You think you are able to make an online shop for the game? Is that a good feature? Uh, online shopping. Uh, yes, possible. However, when it comes to actual credit card processing, uh, I am really hesitant to make it mass available for people to poke at the code. Uh, if we were to implement any sort of credit card ability into RPG Maker, we would really have to make sure that it, it would probably have to be third party. I would not do it from scratch. So I would not make our own payment processor. I would use something like PayPal or something along those lines where you can put in your own credentials because there's so much room for uh, error. There's so much room for things going wrong. And I don't want to be blamed for that because a lot of people who are using RPG Maker and the online system are not the most... Um, are not DevOps engineers. They're not people. You know, most people who who are who are watching this probably have a little bit of knowledge of how this works. But there's a lot of people who use this system who who don't have a fundamental understanding of, you know, the security risks involved with something like credit card processing. So, yes, you can do an online shop for the game. Uh, it just has its challenges. Uh, I have to try. Shit it. Share it, Terry. What? I have no idea what that French word means. <laughs> mm. New table on Mongo for this to work. Uh, yes, pretty much. You said mangoes, but I'm going to go. I'm going to believe you said Mongo. So that, that's what I'm going with. Yes, we're going to have to put this new table on Mongo. Uh, and I'm thinking we're going to do a new table. I think that's what we're going to go with. Holy shit, it's 926. All right, let's, let's fucking move. All right. Let's do this. Um, I don't know how far we're going to get with this tonight, but let's say... Really quick, I want to check how we're...
Creator color index. Mm. No, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this, this is where we want to be here. So notice how we have this creator bitmap. So this build bitmap, this build bitmap, SV, dead, face. This is where the, the magic is happening. Oh, oh, oh. Build bitmap. Here we go. In character creations. Is this built off anything? No, it's not built off anything. Build bitmap from info. Perfect. Like so dead face SV. Snap sprite. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, so this is a lot of the uh Yeah. Two up can two can't two 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 a bit two 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 eight can two can uh yeah 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 no th that's how I would do it I would do it by like you know you get your developer key from PayPal you put it in and PayPal handles the actual credit card processing yes of course you could do something like that um how you want to set it up and use it is completely up to you but it would be very similar to how you would create a store in all honesty um you can create you know technically i would actually consider making it a html web page so make it like an actual website and you can actually open up websites within rpg maker mv and it's probably a better way forward and using an actual website to, to handle all of this. But yes, you could do it in game. I mean, theoretically, you could, you know, have like a shop and it takes actual money. Uh, I would highly suggest against that, but you could do it. Once again, I would go the route of opening a web page within RPG Maker to link to a store, which then links to your database. When they buy an item, they actually get the item through the database if that makes sense. But once again, we'll be getting into that with global economies and how to handle uh, handing off items and stuff like that. That's for another time. All right, so this build bitmap is how we are going to set info, bitmap, snap bitmap. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to fiddle with this. Okay, is that info? Um, all right, I'm just trying to think of how, how deep I want to get into this today because I'm fizzling out and I'm, I'm spinning my wheels on a lot of technical things in my head that I don't want to bog you down with. <laughs> um, shit. Hmm. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Uh, let's do, um, what do I want to test first with this? Let's test some of these, um, this game character creations. Do this. So, 
this is all built into this. So let's say so build bitmap ID info. Oh, that's ugly. All right, so wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. If I say build bitmap three, bitmap. Hands on, I have to double take on this. So my question is, here's what I'm trying to do. So, so. I see what we got going on here. So this this game character creation dot build bitmap is create. So it's taking this information that we have over here, which is our data, and our ID is three, right? And what we're trying to do here is we're trying to take this information, and we're saying, hey, create the bitmap here. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to take this bitmap and paste it onto a onto another event. So let's try to do it on this event. So event number two. The better question is how in the hell do we do that? So the snap sprite, so game temp error constraint. Where in the hell is this set? So here, 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 here. So let's log this out. So let's say, uh, all right, just to get an idea of what the heck is actually being run. All right, so build bitmap three. Okay, so undefined. So now we got a new one here. Okay, so what happens if it's null? Or it's undefined, so it's undefined. The first thing is it does is it creates this window character creator. Preview. How is this preview? Window character. Window base. Standard padding. What the, the hell is this? There's a new sprite. Yet. Hold on, hold on. Second time, this character constructor. It's saying that it has an origin of zero zero. Uh, uh, uh. 
Okay, this character constructor preview is important. If you window. Oh. Oh, shit. What the fuck is this? Give me a second, guys. This is, uh... A little, <coughs> excuse me, confusing on my part. Not understanding exactly what's going on here. I don't want to waste too, too much more of your time going over this. I might have to put in some extra time to understand what the hell's going on here by logging out a bunch of stuff. Light key, remote sprite. Refresh. What the hell is this thing doing? Make the copy. Stay. Oh. Oh, so this is this window character creator preview is actually creating the the character. But how does it set it to the sprite? This is where I'm getting a little confused here. Not what I want. Preview. Yeah, but that's the preview. Spray character, set character bitmap. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. <laughs> here we go, okay, okay, okay. Where am I here? 1628. Let me just put a uh, red dot on that sucker. I don't forget where I am. Okay, so here's what's going on here, just so we're all on the same page. I'm sorry again for, for not talking a lot. I'm kind of digesting the code here. Uh, so the set character bitmap, it, it's looking when you are at the sprite character level. Uh, it says, if you have a set image, then just call the set image. And we should probably look at what the set image is, actually is. But um, else, is it dead custom character? Run the ca get creator bitmap dead or get creator bitmap now the better question is as set image there we go <laughs> Okie dokie. Okie dokie. So this is very interesting. Okay. So right now, game character is automatically false. Game event. Oh, can you set it in the in the thing over here? Hold on, hold on, hold on. This is where reading the the help file would probably make a little bit more sense. Uh, character creator, a menu in which the player can uh, in order to specify custom editors, setting up files. Uh, today's folders. Still lies over here. Uh, other images. These images are the background image. Opening the character creator, for example. Showing dead custom character. That's fine. 
setting event for use to use custom character. If you wish for an event to use a custom image, simply use the note tag custom character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So once again, I don't want to put this. Um, No, 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 I'm not gonna find it like that. Hold on. Hold on. God. <laughs> oh, God, I could be looking for a long time here. Hold on. Custom character. Shit. <laughs> All right, this is going to be a little difficult. Set up custom character. The game event, this set up custom character. And then if the note is equal to custom character. Okay, this is where we are here. Okay. Okay, and then what are we doing here specifically to say if the note matches custom character ID? Yeah, that's parse the integer character actor. Okay, okay, so interesting. Okay, so what is going on here is he's saying as you set up the game event, you know, what is the custom character? Um, okay, yeah, I, I totally get what's going on here. Okay. So let's save here. So the first thing we're going to have to do is save. We'll save on file one for right now. Uh, and let's change this to what was the again? Let's keep that there. So let's go to the help file. I'm sorry, guys. I'm kind of all over the place here. So custom character. We're gonna set it up to custom character three in a note tag, and I haven't used note tags in a while here, so give me a second. Noty, noty, note, note. Uh, where is the notes? It's somewhere here. Oh, Jesus, notes. I'm thinking old comment tags, that's what I'm thinking of. It's been a while. Um, so if we set it to number three, Apply. This should change this to. Oh, well, I have to. I have to go to the title screen and actually load game one. Huh. Change that. Why? Oh, because I need to start a new game. Jesus. Right, because it didn't save. Eh. Hold on. Yeah, let's change this. Let's see if this works. Uh, crap. Ah, it's one thing I'm not a fan of. Yeah, there we go. All right, so that did work. <clears throat> now the better question is, how in the hell are we going to make this dynamic? Oh, this is going to be rough. <laughs> well, no, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, this shouldn't be that rough. Um, so right here we're setting up the custom character based off of the game event so here here let me let me um see if i can show you what i'm what i have in mind uh totally will not be able to get to this tonight but i just kind of want to outline what i'm thinking here uh so if i come to 
my MV online system. I go to online network players. What I am using here is this game network player is run off the game event. Okay. And SRD is using this game event uh, set up custom character to check specifically the note tag on the custom character. So what I can do is I can come over here and game event, you know, set up custom character will run over here. And then I can do something like this. And make this based off of Instead of giving it a oh, mm, this is where it's going to get a little interesting. So we're going to have to get creative, ladies and gentlemen. Because everything that some random dude made was based off of this concept of custom character being a tied to the actor, which was a smart way of doing it. But we might need to hijack that a little bit. Because we don't want to be saving it to actors. Or we might have to. I mean, if that's the way that it's built in, we might just have to. So when a character loads, it takes over a, an actor slot that's freed up. So you could say, you know... Actor slots 100 to 200 are free to overwrite. And as you enter a new map, those slots clear. And as network players join you, you download it to your actor slots that you have. And then we use those actor slots to kind of when you set up a custom, you know, when you generate a new network player, it gets the next slot, generates the, the data that's there, and then it uses that to actually create the the uh, network player event um i'm gonna have to go through the code more honestly this is one of those things where i don't think i'm gonna be able to do much more on stream uh just because there's there's a lot of nuance with this i did not realize that there was going to be this much nuance um but it, it, it it's promising i mean let, let's be real here it's very very promising the fact that i can come in here and just grab uh you know game character creations and I can see exactly what I just built no problem oh look right here and this is everything that I need all in one place uh, it's really really nice um, I'm not gonna lie it's kind of gonna be really really awesome for uh, for testing for you know just integrating with everything else um, so I'm happy about this I'm happy where we leave off. We got auto login working, folks. Let's let's, let's take that. Run with it. Um, and I think that we're gonna. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna have to spend more time with this, guys. I'm sorry. Um, we'll come back to this next week, and we're gonna try to. Uh, integrate it a little bit more uh, think about how we're going to you know if you want to make multiple characters how can you save multiple characters that kind of thing maybe put a cap on how much you want to put into it um, and then we're going to have to figure out a way to when you then load your character Yeah, we'll work on an MVP next week. We'll work on an MVP. So what what so the game plan for next week, we want to upload a we want to upload this data to the database. Uh probably in a new collection, I'm thinking. So we want to upload this data to the database in a new collection. Um whether in an array or key to, I'll figure out the structure of it. We want to key it off. Uh, we want to tie it to our user. And then what we're going to do is we're going to try to pass it back and forth and see if the 
other client can interpret the data and make the sprite on the fly. And if we can get those two things working, folks, we're in business. And then it's really past that it's optimizing. So it's making sure that, uh, you know, this, you know, the, the string back and forth works properly. The, um, you know, we can limit based off of how, you know, if you have over like four users or something or four characters or something like that, maybe we can mess with it. Like we, we gotta, we gotta build some stuff in so that people can, can use it across the board. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else along those lines. I think that's what we're going to work on next week. You know, minimum viable project product to get on. Uh, excuse me. Uh, minimum viable project product to get um, character creator EX up and rocking so people can see other creations uh, yeah I feel I feel pretty good about that so auto login pretty nice feature and uh, happy St. Patty's Day Hope everyone has a wonderful week. Once again, if you need to get in touch with me, uh, Discord channel is probably the best bet. Uh, let me know anything else that's going on, and I'm going to try and take some of these action items this week and actually you know, work on them. Once again, still have to work on documentation and everything else, and some of the bigger, broader questions when it comes to um, just documentation and and you know all these upgrades that we're doing, trying to make sure that they're semi backwards compatible or thinking about maybe updating some of the videos that we already have so keeping all that in mind i'd love to hear suggestions if anyone has anything out there um yeah let me know uh, with that have a wonderful week everybody enjoy